Okay, Steve, I'm ready. Have you ever really thought about the shape of Montana? We're all surrounded by right angles and rectangles, but here's Montana breaking out into this big, beautiful thing. It's so familiar to us and unique that even emoji Montana gets it more or less right. But really, why is there not just a North Wyoming? Why does Montana break out and break from the quilt pattern of the interior west? Tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about why Montana isn't North Wyoming, and I'm going to highlight some news that happens because of or in spite of the unique borders of our state. Gold strikes in this area in the 1860s created the demand for there to be a more specific territory carved out around this area. Uh, it was the Civil War and gold was flowing to both sides and the U.S. had a need to have more direct control. The territorial governor at the time traveled to D.C. to lobby Lincoln directly for a new territory. But this was distant frontier, and the different ideas they had, it wasn't very well understood how this was going to play out on the landscape or capture those gold fields. Uh, one idea had the bar border farther north running west to the divide, which would give Wyoming a little panhandle and an extra park entrance. Uh, <laughs> That map divided up the basins where the gold was found, um, which could isolate future gold strikes, and it would also be really difficult to police. The final border was set at 45 degrees north, ran west to about 111 and a half, where it dropped down to the Continental Divide and kept going west to the Bitterroots. That's the definition we still use today. Um, for a dozen more years, nobody really knew where that line was on the ground. A survey was commissioned to understand how it all fit together. The rugged landscapes of southern Montana and the hand tools that they had to do all this work at the time meant that the border posts were often far north or south of the line. Congress was upset about the survey, but they still certified the border. Most areas were so sparsely used back then that it didn't really matter exactly where the border was. Today we see booming populations and economic activity around borders measured with GPS precision. The differences between here and there become the subjects of national news and politics. Some things are mundane. Montana will plow the interstate all night if needed. North Dakota stops plowing at night and starts again in the morning. So the, the highway often gets closed at the border. This is a normal side effect of borders. Uh, you know, it's good for the Super 8 and Weibo, but other than that, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, other things happen across borders, like zebra mussels. In 2016, there were two reservoirs where zebra mussels were discovered. They can be very expensive to remove, and they're bad for the environment. So this campaign was launched to educate and eradicate. But uh, they also wanted to keep mussels out of the Columbia Basin. The Columbia Divide moves inside Montana at Lost Trail Pass, so the new rules require boat inspection stations at the border and at the divide. So in this case, enforcement gets more expensive because of old decisions that were made about the shape of the state. The state border shapes other places, like reservations and public lands. Five years ago, hunters from Crow Tribe crossed into Bighorn Forest in Wyoming, shot some elk, went back into Montana. They were cited for hunting out of season and also for not having Wyoming hunting licenses. That case was heard at the Supreme Court in January and is being decided right now. Uh, the treaty acknowledges the Crow's right to hunt on occupied lands outside the reservation. Wyoming argued that its own statehood was not just a legal event, it was a recognition that the once wild frontier was no more. So they're saying it's not that the border itself exists, it's that we created something on the other side, which fascinates me. Uh, Yellowstone Park, we know, is tucked right up inside Montana's little tail, where our border is most complex. Uh, early residents here actually lobbied to expand the park around the northern range to protect elk habitat, but people already owned land in the valleys, so the borders there stuck close to the original state border. Bison cross into Montana along the Madison and Yellowstone rivers. Our state splits the management of bison between Fish and Wildlife and Parks and the Department of Livestock. DOL gets authority over the brucellosis exposed herd, which is the whole legal basis for the hazing that you hear about. Three years ago, the governor ordered tolerance zones around the northwest corner of the state, and these follow more natural boundaries like watersheds and bottlenecks like at Yankee Jim Canyon. 
These allow for a transition in management and offer a compromise for the bison, for ranchers, and for taxpayers. Bighorn Reservoir starts in Montana and it extends south into Wyoming across the 45th parallel. Um, Montana wants more water to be released from the dam downstream to support trout populations in the river. Wyoming wants more water kept back to keep their boat landings wet so people can fish on that end. Uh, we found out just in the last month that the models that they use to predict flows there are wrong more than half the time. So that's maybe a bad way to divide up a watershed that didn't stop us from doing the same thing next door in the Tongue where the two states fought over irrigation rights for over a decade. Uh, Montana gained a right to call for water, but no specific amount was granted. Uh, near the northern border, we've got a similar situation. Irrigation in the milk for the whole High Line depends on a diversion from the St. Mary. Uh, without that water, that little bit of water, the milk would go dry most years. The trick is it's got to go into Canada and back before we can use it. And Canada also has a right to call on water that it doesn't use. <laughs> so uh, just briefly, we've looked at several issues that happened because of the shape of our state and how it got to be that way. Uh, most of those were based on political decisions and couldn't have anticipated how we were actually going to use this land in, in the areas around the border. If you want to learn more about it, here's a few ideas for resources. Um, I have a news feed on Flipboard you can follow with, for these topics. There's a great book called They Followed the 45th by Bruce Blevins. And Fish and Wildlife actually has some good pop publications I used for source material. So thanks a lot for your time.